So you actually believe a book like that can make a difference? I guess it depends what, what day you're asking me and what sort of like responses I've gotten that day. So tell me, what was the gist of the plan going into to working in the shadows? What were you trying to do? A lot of the story about immigration is a story of, of work, of trying to improve your life, improve the lives of your children through coming and finding other work opportunities. And I realized even after spending three or four years doing reporting on immigrants and immigration, I didn't have a good sense of, you know, what is it like to actually do these jobs? And so I wanted to spend a year, you know, undercover, not telling bosses, not telling coworkers what I, that I was writing a book, and just showing up for shifts and working in the lettuce fields, working at a poultry plant, doing all these various jobs. I mean, jobs. did you have any idea what you were getting into, though, when you started the project? I didn't understand how exhausting it would be physically. So yeah. I had this idea that, you know, I went to Arizona and worked in the lettuce fields for two months. I thought I'd be coming home at night and writing up like the book in the evening. I didn't realize uh, that I'd come home and just fall asleep immediately. Um, I think, you know, if you had this insomnia and you went into the lettuce fields and you worked there, I think am it would, I, it would I have to cure it. You're picking lettuce in Arizona, physically exhausting. Mm -hmm. You're going to Alabama. You write about it like it's apocalypse now, basically, in there, where who's in charge here kind of thing at times. And then you go to New York and you're dealing with a couple different underground sort of uh, jobs, which one would you know you never ever want to do again? I would never ever want to work in the flower shop that I worked at in, uh, in Manhattan's flower shop. because your bosses were ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I started with lettuce because I thought farm work would be the most physically exhausting, which it was. Poultry was sort of mentally depressing and difficult, but in the flower shop, I was excited about the flower shop. It's like, oh, it's a mom and pop place. I'm not working for some multinational giant. But what I realized is it's one of those shops that's like a, a sweatshop hiding in plain sight. As soon as you walked into this flower shop, the two bosses would start shouting at you, sit there. Mm -hmm. And then, what are you doing sitting there? And it's like, uh, you just told me to sit there. But you know, I would just totally shut up because no one ever talked back. Everyone yeah. sort of had their head down. I could imagine doing a year kind of in the lettuce fields if I really need to. I don't think I could have survived a year working at the flower shop without yeah. like just having my psyche destroyed or and or like punching one of them. You can only be beaten down so long before you would eventually rise up. Or just leave. Or just, More likely yeah, leave. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I like the idea of rising yeah, up. But you're I was, a pacifist. Certain talking heads, you constantly hear the refrain, immigrants are taking American jobs. Did you find that to be true? Anyone could walk into Dole's HR office and say, I'd like to be put out in the fields. And I showed up, I think, on Thursday. They had me working on Monday. I, I came to Alabama with no experience in poultry, and within a week, I was working the shifts. The real difficulty is not um, you know, getting the jobs. The difficulty is surviving or enduring the jobs. The difficulty in the future, like the real thing that needs to happen, is improving these jobs so they're not so hard to endure. Because they're hard to endure for everyone. You How know, do you these, do that? How do you improve? These jobs need to get done. I mean, as long as you have a large percentage of workers in an industry or in a shop uh, having a fear that whenever they speak out against the boss, they're going to be sent back home, it's going to be difficult to improve them. I think one of the real key ways in which you can improve some of these industries is by having some immigration reform that allows these workers to get on a path to citizenship so that they don't have the same fear. In healthcare reform just passed, undocumented workers are not going to be getting any benefits from the healthcare reform package. How did healthcare and access to healthcare impact the workers that you were with? If you were a bike delivery uh, guy yeah. and you get hit by a car, and you'll go to the emergency room and um, you won't have workers comp or anything, they won't have signed you up for it, you, you give them a fake name. Mm -hmm. The bill goes to the hospital, goes, and it has to be picked up by public taxpayer dollars. That's not really a problem, I don't think, that has its roots in the worker being undocumented. That's a problem in that the labor, the, the, the companies are not following labor laws. Pilgrim's Pride and Walmart uh, didn't invest in, in the workers, so they, instead they, they put that bill onto general taxpayers. Mm -hmm. uh, the last question we always ask um, at, on Drinks with Writers is, who is your favorite alcoholic writer? Um, they'd be my friends. Yeah. <laughs>